Hey there, and welcome to The Cozy Corner, a podcast about all things cozy. Join us as we dive into the world of film and TV, a little true crime and spooky time, food reviews, and talk to some special guests too. So get cozy, grab some snacks, and settle in, because we're about to begin. Hello listeners, and thank you so much for joining. It's Emily here, and today I'm flying solo on our second ever episode of True Crime and Spooky Time. Now, the last time we did a True Crime and Spooky Time episode, we did a true crime one, and it was very interesting. It was about Robert Maudsley, um, who is the longest-serving British prisoner. He's turned 70 behind bars, and um, he killed, I think, about four people, that's kind of since I've finished that case now it has disappeared from my head so I no longer have that information so I think it was four people but you know go back check it out and see and um, if I was wrong let me know <laughs> um, but it was such an interesting case because it really raised the question of are you born a killer or are you formed that way because of your environment and I think with Robert Maudsley it was the latter but hey Go check it out and decide for yourself. Really, really unique case. And I honestly feel sorry for the guy. So if you want to know why, go back to the episode of Robert Maudsley and have a little listen. But today, since we are not doing true crime, we are doing a spooky time story. And I was very much inspired by a local Liverpool company, a tour company called Shiverpool they introduced me to this story when I was on one of their tours and I was so intrigued by it that I had to go and look it up for myself and it's just really it it's it stuck with me it's one of those stories where it's so intriguing and interesting that you can't stop thinking about it and there's actually you can go see a part of this story in Liverpool you can go and see a tomb yeah, and you know, if you're from Liverpool, you probably already know what I'm talking about. The pyramid tomb. The weird pyramid tomb that no one's really quite sure why is it that shape and what's going on. Well, I'm going to tell you. So, let's get into the story of William Mackenzie, the man who made a deal with the devil. If that doesn't draw you in, I don't know what's going to. So, let's get right into it. This is the spooky story of William Mackenzie the man who made a deal with the devil himself, and why he was supposedly buried in a mysterious pyramid-shaped tomb in the heart of Liverpool's Georgian Quarter. Now, if you haven't been there, like, I do recommend going to check it out. We checked it out, uh, me and Abby, when we went on a Shiverpool tour, and it was very, very interesting, and there's a funny story to go along with that. But I might let Abby talk about that in in another episode because she tells it better than me. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was a good tour. Definitely check that out. And just that area itself, very spooky. You know, great spooky vibes for all those who love spooky vibes like me. And um, on that Shiverpool tour, we it was raining, it was dark and it was rainy, immaculate vibes. But anyway, so who was? William Mackenzie. Well, let's get into a little bit of backstory about him. So in around 1815, William James Mackenzie was a very well-respected man, and he was known for endorsing the early railway system and was a man of great scientific progress. He was born March 20th, 1794, near Nelson in Lancashire, and was the eldest of 11 children to Alexander Mackenzie who was a Scottish contractor. Excuse me, I'm just going to actually open a drink at the moment. I didn't think of this before the podcast, so a normal person would cut this out, but no. No, here on the Cozy Corner podcast, we don't cut things out. We are authentic. So, excuse me, a little bit of ASMR, perhaps. I have no idea whether that was too loud. If it was, I apologise. Uh, See if you can guess what drink I'm actually drinking just from that sound. I'd be interested to know if you get it right. That was a delicious sip. (laughs) Um, So Mackenzie became a European civil engineer contractor in the 1840s. 
His work had a significant impact on the city of Liverpool, yet his lasting legacy is shrouded in myth. That's a great word, shrouded. Shrouded, I could say that all day. That's a really great word. When it comes to Liverpool, Mackenzie was responsible for construction of tunnels on the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, including the Edge Hill to Lime Street Tunnel and the Grand Junction Railway. Now, brief tangent for a minute there. Um, if you know anything about tunnels and the whole like Gilliams and Tunnels thing, like that is such a big thing in Liverpool. I absolutely love it. I've been before. It's amazing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's these not unrelated to this case. I'm just going off on a tangent, but. And this isn't even a case, it's a story, but hey. Um, so this tangent is leading us below Liverpool for a moment. Um, these tunnels, we, no one knows why they were actually built, but they were built by um, Joseph Williamson. I think it's Joseph, someone Williamson. And um, it's really fascinating story because no one knows why they were built, what they were for. What was going on they were under his house they're under a big part of liverpool they lead to all kinds of places and then there's dead ends as well and some of them and it's just a big mystery so i'm thinking of covering that for a future episode of spooky time because it is a bit spooky as well like there's a spooky element to that so if you guys would be interested in that let us know comment on some social media or send us a message email in and if you've got any other like suggestions for spooky stories that you want us to cover, let us know. Anyway, back to the spooky story. So we travel. He also travelled and worked away from England through Europe in countries such as Spain, Italy, and France. Over his lifetime, Mackenzie contributed to shaping the city through its railway development and became exceptionally wealthy in the process. Following his death in 1851, Mackenzie had amassed a fortune of, now forgive me I am dyslexic so pronouncing these numbers might take a minute, I believe it's 300, 300,000, so a fortune of over 300,000, yes that's correct, 300,000, uh, which he left to his younger brother Edward. Now, obviously conversion rates and all that's going to be a different amount in today's money so fun fact in today's money that would be 34 million four hundred and sixty six thousand we're not done yet two hundred and sixty three pounds quite a bit really so <laughs> um not all that much is actually written about Mackenzie himself in books from Liverpool's history but the biggest source of information on him is actually his own diary which has been published to the public in the year 2000. Now although he was thought of as a pillar of the community there was also a darker side to William Mackenzie. He was alleged to be a compulsive gambler and a violent drunk and often described to be a, wo a womanizer. I could not get that word out then. Womanizer. Although having such a big impact on the city, Mackenzie is more commonly remembered nowadays as a legend that is heavily steeped in folklore. So now it's time to delve into the legend of the man who made a deal with the devil. So... As an avid gambler, Mackenzie loved a game of poker. Word got around about how good he was at the game, piquing the interest of a certain Mr. Reeves. On one cold and misty night in October of 1850, Mackenzie became consumed with a drunken game of poker, playing against this mysterious man. Having previously played a few hands with the striking gentleman before and clocking his impressive skill set for the game, Mackenzie was infatuated with facing the challenge again. Had he finally met his match that night, or would he yet again go home with all his winnings? The game stretched until the early hours of the morning, with Mr. Reeves dominating the hand, ensuring Mackenzie lost everything. 
everything he bet that evening was no longer his. The stocks, the shares, the ships, houses, even his own home, gone. But just as Mackenzie was about to accept his crushing defeat, Mr Reeves offered him a proposition. Another game, Mackenzie, Mr Reeves tempted. Confused by the offer, Mackenzie reminded him of just how penniless he now is, asking what more could he take, for Mackenzie has nothing left to bet. With a sharp, twisted grin, Mr Reeves answered, But what about your soul? Of course, Mackenzie thought the man was joking, dismissing the idea. Luring him further into the foolish bargain, Reeves indulged Mackenzie with an irrefutable deal. Mr Reeves cleverly pointed out that, as an atheist, surely Mackenzie didn't believe that he even had a soul to lose? So what would be the harm in betting it? Especially as Reeves is now willing to give him back everything he lost tonight, as long as he wins the next game. The deal was too good to pass up and Mackenzie accepted the offer. Ultimately, he lost the game. It was only after he surrendered his soul that his opponent's identity was revealed. Mackenzie had played poker with the devil and lost. In desperation, Mackenzie begged Reeves not to claim his soul. Reeves assured him that he would not, in fact, claim his soul. Not yet. Not until he is dead and buried beneath the ground. Only then will he claim what is now his. Ever since that night, Mackenzie has been paranoid about his deal with the devil. I mean, fair enough. He devised a plan to outsmart Reeves, leaving very specific instructions upon his death. He died just one year after the deal was struck, aged 57 in 1851. These instructions included not being buried below the ground, but rather above it, sitting upright at a table, displaying a winning hand of poker. As the deal said, the devil could only claim his soul if he was dead and buried beneath the ground in his grave. So now we know the mystery as to why the tomb of William Mackenzie was so oddly shaped and why he was laid to rest in such a strange position with a winning game of poker in one hand. Some have theorised this was one last attempt to cheat the devil out of his own deal, or maybe Mackenzie just wanted to play one last game when the devil came to collect what was owed. The inscription on the 15-foot tomb reads, in the vault beneath lie the remains of William Mackenzie of Newby, Dunfordshire, Esquire, who died 29th of October 1851, aged 57. Also, Mary, his wife, who died on the 19th of December 1838, aged 48. And Sarah, his second wife, who died on the 9th of December 1867, aged 60. This monument was erected by his brother Edward as a token of love and affection, A.D. 1868. The memory of the just is blessed. Now, if you notice from that inscription, it said that the tomb was built in 1868. Now that is 17 years after Mackenzie had died. So where was Mackenzie's body before then? Did the devil get his soul? Or did Mackenzie manage to outsmart the devil with a loophole? So that was the spooky story of William Mackenzie, the man who made a deal with the devil. So personally, I really enjoyed that story. I think it's got everything that you need for a good spooky story. Hits the spot. 
Um, but I really enjoyed the in that story the devil appears not outright as the devil. It's it's very um like it's a hidden message you know he appears as Mr Reeves and perhaps there's some kind of meaning from that name I don't know but maybe there is um often in different stories you might see certain characters appear with a name that has a meaning to it so it'd be interesting um, to see if that did have a meaning but overall I thought that that was a really good story and I liked how it showed that although Mackenzie obviously could be quite a greedy man like he wanted to keep betting and keep going and he didn't know when to stop obviously until it was too late but from his backstory we know that he's actually a very hard-working and generous man and he helped form the city so it shows you know two different sides of of that coin there like yes he can he has that darker side to him but look at the other good things that he's done and I thought it was really interesting that moment when Mr. Reeves, a.k.a. the devil, asks him to bet his soul. Now, a lot of people would never bet their soul. They're far too religious for that. You know, there's a, a lot of religious connotations and fear surrounding that. If you bet your soul, then ultimately that would mean that you're going to end up in hell. But, of course, the devil points out that Mackenzie is known to be an atheist. And I wanted to bury that a little bit deeper into the story because I didn't want to say it right off. Because otherwise, you know, immediately you'd be thinking, well, he's not going to care about that because he's not religious. But, um, yeah, he was quite known to be an atheist and kind of thought that those things were all a bit, like, frivolous and silly. But then when he came down to it, he didn't really want to bet his soul. Just, you know, on the off chance. What if? What if? It's real. What if he bets his soul and then he finds out actually hell exists, heaven exists? Who knows? Because to be fair, who's to say? You know, there's no one who can definitively say what comes after and where people go, where your soul goes. No one really knows. And I think it's in that moment he realised that he wasn't 100% sure. Did he really want to take that chance? But he was tempted far too much by Reeves uh, Reeves's offer of winning back everything he's just lost because obviously all the devil wants in that scenario was his soul he wasn't interested in any of the things that he just won he didn't care about his houses or the ships or the land or anything the stocks nothing he didn't care about that that's worthless to him he just wanted the soul so in order to get that, he had to make him think that he's lost everything, to take everything from him, and then to offer it back if he just bets his soul, which he points out to you, apparently, means nothing anyway. So what's the harm? And I think it's it's an interesting moral because it tells people, like, you can outsmart people, you can get the better of people if you really think about things because I do think although it's left a mystery I do think that Mackenzie outsmarted the devil in that story now of course we all know this is just folklore it's a legend it didn't really happen unless you believe in that stuff then okay sure it did but I do think it really happened it's just you know it's a fun spooky story but let's say it did happen Well, then I think in this story, he definitely outsmarted the devil. Because the terms of the agreement were, when you are dead and buried beneath the ground in your grave. Well, he was none of those things. See, he had a smart brain. He was like, nah, I'm not going to follow the terms of the agreement. So then, therefore, he should not have been able to get his soul if that was the agreement in order to deliver the soul to the devil well he can't he can't get it if you're not in the grave so that's why we've got that weird pointy pyramid tomb because apparently he sat upright in there with a wooden hand of poker in, in his in his hand which like i don't think anyone can really prove that and apparently his grave has been broken into and his skull was stolen um 
that that was a story that I came across. I don't know how true that is, but I came across it and I was like, okay, you know what? I understand the curiosity there. I too would want to see, is is he, is he really sat up in there? And then what went on with that tomb not being erected until like 17 years after his death? Well, where was his body then? You know, was he just in the ground? Was he not in the ground? Was he set up somewhere else? These are the details we need and we're not getting them. We're not getting them because I couldn't find a single source that actually knew where his body was in those 17 years. Not a clue. So I do hope he outsmarted the devil. I think potentially. It, it seemed like to me that he has. Like that was the moral of the story is that he outsmarted him based on a loophole because he used his brain. Like he was smart. He seen the technicality there of the terms and decided to use them to his advantage. And there have been many, many sightings of an apparent William Mackenzie. Um, when I was on the Shiverpool tour, I kept thinking, oh my God, we're going to see something. Because it felt spooky, you know. It it just felt like we could see a ghost at any moment. Um, but yeah, lots and lots of sightings in the cemetery itself and all around there and by Rodney Street. So many people have recalled seeing a spirit that they described as William Mackenzie. So who knows, maybe he is now a lost spirit trapped on earth, unable to pass on because he beat the devil with this loophole. Maybe that's what he gets. Maybe that's the punishment for beating the devil, there we go. He left to roam around the earth now, which to be fair, in, like it's a nice area, it's the, it's the Georgian Quarter, it's pretty nice. So I don't think he's got too much to complain about. <laughs> but anyway, I hope that you all really enjoyed listening to this episode. It's a little bit of a shorter episode today because I was just going off of a story that I compiled together from different sources and, and discussing that. So a little bit shorter, but nonetheless, I think it was quite enjoyable. So don't forget to subscribe. Make sure on whatever podcast app you are watching, click that subscribe button, turn on the notifications. That's important. That helps us, helps us help you because then you don't miss an episode. And also, especially on Spotify, rate us, please. It helps so much. Give us a rating, whatever rating you think that we deserve. Go on and give us that rating on Spotify. You can also check us out on YouTube for when we do video episodes. You can subscribe there and make sure to check us out on Instagram as well. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. Give us some feedback wherever you can on social media. And we hope to have you listening next time as well. Stay cozy.